friends, it's time for June favourites and two little quick announcements before I get started. And number one, me and Lily, Lily Pebbles from My Heart Today, are going to be filming some more videos together, which I'm so excited about because I love filming with her. And we're going to do monthly beauty chat type videos, so kind of like beauty Q&As, and we're going to alternate it so that one month it's on her channel, one month it's on my channel. So we need some questions, so feel free to tweet us. I'm at Viviana Makeup and she is at... Lily Pebbles or leave a question in the comments below and then we will start working our way through and answering those. Number two, if you are going on holiday soon, I have got a whole kind of little series of holiday packing videos coming up. I've just come back from a few days away and it was really nice, really chilled. And I think for once I actually packed an all right amount of makeup. I'm gonna put some videos together for if you're going on holiday to the beach, or you're going to festivals, or you're going on a city break, or kind of outdoorsy adventure -y type holidays and so they'll be coming up soon as well so keep an eye out for those but June favourites number one I've got two skincare favourites actually this month I've had a few skin problems number one I used MAC face and body foundation full on for a week before realising it was breaking me out so bad but not even like just spots it was like little tiny red really just small like scabby spots it made me feel like I have had stubble. It was really, really bad and it just, the texture of my skin has never been that bad. I've never had a reaction like that to a product. So my face and body will be being reserved for just body duties from now on and not face. And to get rid of that, I found this really handy and I know I've spoken about it a million times before and it's the Aesop Parsley Seed Cleansing Mask, but I just thought I'd mention it if you've had a similar problem. I found that like obsessive use of this came in very handy. It says to use it twice weekly all year round and I was using this maybe like every other day so I really upped my dosage a bit. This really helps sort it out and sort it out quite quickly as well. It's taken three-ish weeks for it to go completely and now my skin feels smooth again. But the other thing that's been happening is I've been getting really strange kind of psoriasis-y, um, eczema -y type patches over my eyes and I've actually got psoriasis on my legs and on my ears anyway so I've got a feeling it's probably that but I've got them on my eyelids and I've never had that before. I've had it in my hair, I've had it on my arms, I've had it kind of everywhere else but never had it on my eyes. And it's really hard when you've got it on your face to kind of, because obviously you need to keep it quite emollient and keep moisturizing all the time. And obviously that's hard if you want to wear things like eyeshadow or that kind of stuff. So it's been a bit of a pain in the ass. But the lovely Amelia Liana gave me this because she had a similar problem. And so she scooped me out a little sample of this and I've written down what it is called. And it is the African Botanics Marula Intensive Skin Repair Body Balm which is ridiculously expensive, but I would definitely suggest, perhaps I think you can pick this up from Space and K, kind of going in with a little sample, because if you've got quite a small patch, a little goes such a long way, you don't need a lot of this at all. Um, I just take a tiny little bit and just like make it into an oil in my fingertips and then just smooth over my eyelids. But I would suggest perhaps like picking up the wee little sample if you suffer from the same problem, because it's really been helping, especially at night, I just put loads on, and if during the day I'm not gonna wear Eyeshadow, I've just been putting this on as well and it's really been helping to clear it up. So that is fabulous. And thank you, Amelia, for your little tip because it really has worked. And then the next thing is a perfume. And I'm quite like stuck in my perfume ways, really. I like Stella, Stella McCartney. I like Diptyque Velocicus. But this one is a new recent discovery and it's Diptyque Vetivario. And I've got a feeling it's one of their more like unisex scents. I've been thinking about this video, but thinking what I'm going to say about this. And I'm awful at describing scents, but it's just like fresh, it's kind of a fresh citrusy type scent. And after a bit of consideration, I would say the best way to describe this is if you liked CK1 back in the day, I still love CK1, it was my first ever perfume. This is like an almost more sophisticated version of that. It's kind of like non-offensive, I can't imagine anyone not liking this, it's just a really nice fresh summery scent. It doesn't last particularly well, but I tend to spritz some of this on and maybe layer it up with Diptyque Velocicus. I've got that in rollable form, so I just put that on to like top up a bit of scent during the day. But this is really nice in the morning. I'm quite funny with scents. A lot of different ones make me feel really headachey and I don't like that at all and I don't have that problem with this one. And then I've got three makeup favourites. And the first one I discovered when I was away and I was sort of in the middle of nowhere except there was really tiny little boots. And all, all while we were there, I was like, no, I'm not gonna go in boots because boots is the same everywhere, blah, 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 blah. And then on the final day I caved and I was like, I need to go in there, I need to have a look. I was like itching, <laughs> itching to pick something up. And I found this and it's the number seven essentially natural foundation. It says it's for all skin types and the coverage is light medium. And I have a shade Cool Ivory in this. 
And the one that I went to only had like five shades of this, but I've got a feeling there's maybe nine. And number seven have that thing where you go up and they like put some machine on your face and match you up to all their colours, all that kind of thing. So it's a good one to get matched to. Um, this colour suits me really nicely. And today I'm wearing it with the Dior BB Cream mixed in. And it's just a really nice foundation. It's definitely one of the best light coverage foundations I've found from the drugstore because sometimes I find they can be like a bit oily, like or feel a bit heavy and like greasy on the skin. This doesn't feel like that at all. I just apply it with my fingers and it's kind of in between. It reminds, the finish actually reminds me quite a lot of the Dior BB cream in the fact that it's not overly dewy but it's not overly matte. It's kind of somewhere in the middle and it's nine pound which i just think is an absolute bargain and the next favorite comes courtesy of amelia again she went to the us and bought this back for me and it's the l'oreal 24 hour infallible eyeshadow in 890 bronzed taupe and this is basically l'oreal's version of the Giorgio armani eyes to kill um the little eye things they do and it's got one of those like a pressed pigment it's got a little plug in the top and the shade looks a little something like this and taupe eyeshadows i'm kind of like on the fence about i just don't find they particularly suit my coloring that much especially satin taupe for by mac i know everyone loves it but i always go in and I swatch it and i'm always like nah, like i sit on the fence with it this is really nice because it's kind of quite a neutral taupe it's not too cool toned i find that cool toned eyeshadows on me don't really suit my coloring very well i have to have something with a bit of red in it and this almost has a bit pink in it and that just adds a bit of something something that makes it kind of okay with my skin tone i really like it and i like the finish of these as well it's it's a powder eyeshadow but it feels quite creamy to the touch and it just blends like beautifully the pigment is like Woo. you american girls are very lucky to have this one but although the shade isn't available over here the texture and the formula is really nice as well and something i would definitely recommend so i think i'll be picking up some more shades of that and having used both the Giorgio armani and that one i would pretty much say they're the darn same and then the final one Annoyingly is a limited edition, you can't get hold of this either, but have a little dupe for you and it's the Cream Sheen MAC Lipstick in Jazz. Does anyone remember this? I picked this up years ago, probably like a good two, three-ish years ago now. I love it. It's one of those ones I always go back to. It's like very nice, peachy pink. I like a good peach pink on the lips. I'm wearing it today very lightly, just kind of patted in. And I love the MAC Cream Sheen finish, they've always been my favourite. And why was this limited edition? It is so nice and there's nothing really in their permanent line that matches this. I guess Ravishing would be sort of similar but it's much more peachy and this definitely has a bit of pink in it. But it is very similar to another limited edition one they brought out called Cut a Cake. And someone tweeted me a link the other day to their blog post and Bourgeois are actually coming out with like Clinique chubby stick dupes and there's a very good dupe for the shade Cut a Caper in that. Cut Caper is very similar to Jazz, but I'll write the name of that below because I can't remember it off the top of my head. But if you have Jazz, pick it up and use it because it's really, really nice. And if you don't, then perhaps this dupe is worth checking out. So on to the final thing. It's a bit of a random one, but Harper's Bazaar magazine I picked up because it had this as a freebie this month. And it was the Leighton Denny Colour and Go. I have the shade I Love Juicy. I've done a blog post all about this. I just think it's an amazing freebie. It was like, this is £11 worth of like freebie going on here and the colour is lovely and it just makes a really good thing for if you're like going on holiday you don't want to have to take like a base coat, a top coat, a colour, this is like everything in one so I really like that and Harper's Bazaar is actually a really nice read, I really enjoyed the beauty pages of that. It's no allure mind you but it did make for some very nice beauty bedtime reading but I really hope you enjoyed this month's favourites, hope you had a good month and if you have a question for me and Lily don't forget to put it below or tweet us all that kind of jazz and I'll see you again soon, bye!